Monty is a broad term that encompasses dumplings from all over the world, including the Caucasus, other parts of Russia, all over Turkey, and other areas in the Middle East, as well as in South and East Asian countries like Pakistan and Mongolia. They usually involve dough filled with minced meat, spices, and onions. They can be any size and fried, baked, steamed, or boiled, depending on where you find them. And as expected, there are different spellings and terms used to refer to Monty throughout the different regions, including Monty, Monta, Monte, Montu, Turkish ravioli, and klepe. On this episode, we're featuring Monta from Evelina, Sarkis, and Francine Yegezerian, the family behind the Monta factory. Their open style, meat-filled dumplings resemble tiny boats with a thin layer of dough wrapped around a small meatball in the center. They're baked until the middle is just cooked and still juicy, and the dumplings are crisp around the edges. It's easy to eat two or three in a single bite. They are my favorite snack dumpling, but I could easily polish off a tray with a nice glass of wine for dinner. Mission standby, we are clear for liftoff. I wrote about the family's Pasadena location back in 2016. It's a small, barely 300 square foot space that I can walk to from my parents' house. This is where the family stood literally shoulder to shoulder, making dumplings from scratch for more than a decade. It started as a small wholesale operation, transitioned to ready to serve, and now they have a much larger second location with a big kitchen and both indoor and outdoor seating in Glendale. And they're still making the manta by hand every morning. How early this morning did you start? Like I'm starting 5.36. 5.30 in the She's morning? She's coming 7. Okay. They can take to the school, mm -hmm. come to the work, and then do their job, and then take them and take home, feed them, and if they have babysitters, come back and then work again. You know, it's like we yeah. are trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> How many, roughly, dumplings do you make in a week? I've lost count. Yeah. Must be like, I mean, right now on the table, it looks like there's a thousand. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, it's lot. Like over 10. Over 10,000? Well, it, it used to be over 10 back there, so I'm, I'm. In that tiny space? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so this I'm, is definitely. This is, yeah. Yeah. Jenny, you can work too. Oh, okay, I can work too, okay. Just line up. <laughs> okay, how many, how many are there supposed to be in here? Uh, nine and eight. <laughs> She's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's getting faster. You hired. Yeah. <laughs> and when you finish, we will wrap it and put on top J. All right. Amazing. First okay. time. For first time, what, yes. What do you agree? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> when we arrived, the batch of manta that was on the table was just the first of many. After the dough is prepared in a large mixer, it's rolled out into a paper-thin layer and spread over the length of a table in the center of the kitchen. Then it's cut into small squares. Meanwhile, Sarkis makes the filling. It's a simple but delicious mixture of ground beef and the family's secret blend of spices. He mixes it by hand until everything is incorporated. And that's what it looks like after it's all mixed up and done. Great. Jenny, you fold too. Okay, I'll fold. Okay, okay. How do you know how much meat you just... I've just got it down to a thing. It's just, it's really hard to explain, but when you squeeze it and you just clean it, it's literally, uh -huh. it's more of a, it's just a habit, like, like you get used memory. to it. Yeah, yeah, muscle memory, exactly, yeah. Okay. So you've been yeah. doing this since you were how old? Um, at home, since I was like five, mm -hmm. but at the factory, I took over in 2012, was officially when I came in. Okay. There's supposed to be square mm -hmm. pieces, but kind of one side is, a, l a little shorter, so I take it like a rectangle, mm -hmm. a rectangle, and um, just fold over the two sides and then pinch it. There's this and like this. Oh. So this one, they make it like that to go in soup. At the Monta factory, the dumplings are served with a tomato sauce and a creamy yogurt garlic sauce. Both are made fresh daily. Depending on who you ask, one or the other is going to be better or more traditional. Order whatever feels right to you. I always end up getting both. But before you top them onto a sauce, you have to bake them. Usually when they're completely frozen over, I just let it sit right here. It goes through and it does its thing. But because you just made this, I'm actually going to push it in so it doesn't burn it. Okay. 
Yeah, the operation has really expanded since I wrote about you guys Big a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it went from three items to like six on the official, no, like seven, eight on the official menu. Yeah. Three, three items off the menu, okay. four now. Evelina, Francine, and Sarkis insisting on serving us the entire spread of dishes. When an Armenian grandmother offers you anything, the correct response is always, yes, please. But of course, the star of the show was the piping hot tray of Manta. Where is your family from originally? Western Armenia. My grandparents coming from Western Armenia. Western Armenia? Yes, and they moved uh, all over the world. Uh, even my husband's side too. Mm -hmm to Romania, to France, to Lebanon, to all over. <laughs> that is so good. You made that. I, oh yeah, I made this. <laughs> you made that. <laughs> I made this tray. The filling is so plump and like juicy. Mm -hmm. So even though they're in that very hot oven, they don't get dried out. That's yeah. They're, they're like crispy, but not dry. That's exactly the, that's supposed to be the perfect bite right there where the outside is crispy but the inside is nice and juicy. Have you, did you grow up eating these? All You guys all grew up eating these and, and how did you learn to make them? I learned this from my father's cousin who's like, I, she, she, she was Bibi, Bibi. yeah Bibi. Bibi. <laughs> she was living with us and every New Year time she was coming to visit us and live with us like maybe a few months mm -hmm. in the winter time and she was making those foods. It is a, all of them. Traditionally, a wintertime dish. Okay. Because it's supposed to be, you know, like the ovens exactly. are on in the house, and mm -hmm. the house is warm, and the monta goes in, and it comes out hot out the oven with the hot tomato sauce, and you sit there in the cold weather and you enjoy it. So that was why and during the winter that time. Come together. And yeah. There's more hands to help with pinching mm -hmm. the monta. So, so you found that nobody was really making them. You couldn't find them around LA. Mm -hmm. Is that because? It's something that people just make at home for themselves. Home. Mm -hmm. for okay. themselves. That and the fact that the labor is so, it's such a labor intensive dish. Mm -hmm. People are always like, aren't you worried about someone else doing it? You know, like making monster. And I was like, I would love to find a family as crazy as we are <laughs> to sit there all day and make monta all day long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if they want to, more power to you, but it's, it's very labor intensive. Many families knew about the monta but they don't have time to make it. So parents were coming, mothers were coming and buying for their kids, kids. Mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, give them the joy. Fulfill the traditions. Yeah. <laughs> and is it, it, is it something that a grandmother would make all the time or just for like special occasions or holidays? Special occasions. That's special why, like, occasions. When holidays. I knew that grandma's mom were making manta, come eat breakfast, nope. Come eat lunch. Nope. <laughs> Monta's yourself. ready. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, are you trying to make this a household name? Like, do you Absolutely. think it's important for more people to know what this type of dumpling is? Absolutely. That was my vision of the whole thing. It was just, once again, it was like, let me open and introduce this to the public, you know? And I, I always tell everyone, if I didn't have this niche in this industry, if I didn't know that, like, I had something special, me personally, I don't think I would have ever went this route into the food industry. But being that I have something that I wanted to, I personally wanted to introduce to everyone is what kept me going with this. And this is definitely, I definitely want this to be a household name. And I want people to remember Manta as like, just remember it, if that, if that makes sense. Because you'll try it and you'll leave and you'll forget it the next day. And you'll go get a burger or some something else, you know, pasta or something. But I want people to remember it. Just like you said, it's, it's not a household name. It hasn't stuck yet, which is my, my mission is to make it stick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Talk to me about the importance of this being a family business. The tradition of food itself and it being a special occasion family dish. Like I said, you would get together with the family. Mm -hmm. The grandparents would make it. I feel like it just adds to that. It, it just adds more flavor to it. It's the fact that it is family made. You know, it's not a machine or it's not a big company making these. It's mom, my sister, myself, and my dad, you know? So it's, it's keeping the tradition alive is very important. And her husband important. love the dish. Okay, I do love the dish. Yeah. <laughs> My brother-in-law, when I started Pasadena, he looks at me, he goes, listen. He goes, the food is great. He goes, so if you mess this up, just know it's your fault. 
Let this episode serve as your official reminder to seek out Manta and never forget it. These tiny dumplings are simply too good to not remember.